The last time we were here was two years ago. There's definitely some new old stuff here. So we have a lot more to adventure this time. Let's see what looks familiar. I remember this it was the Southern Basilica. They had a rock on a pedestal somewhere. I wonder if the rock is still there. <laughs> I remember taking a picture of it. Probably not. I'm sure some curious tourists took it. It was a pretty cool rock. When you're walking around, a lot of times you do look down to check your footing. You do need to look up to see what's there. But while you're watching your footing, make sure you check for old mosaic because it can pop up anywhere and everywhere. It kind of camouflages in here. There's some we took video of two years ago that was way more colorful. This has obviously been exposed quite a bit to the sun. We'll see more mosaic soon. Over the millennia, people have looted this area quite a bit. They're rebuilding quite a bit of it. The main message is do not take souvenirs from here. If you do that, what's gonna happen, old mosaics like this, based on this area here, people have been taking this. Don't take souvenirs from the ground. If everybody takes one, there'll be nothing left in a few years. There's already been enough looting over the centuries and the millennia. As you can see, this was fairly big. And this just, there's so much missing. And you always wonder, where's all the remnants? Well, there's fields of it. You just don't see it. And they probably quarried it from way over that way. That's the way you come in, at least the way we did from Antalya. This is in the Southern Basilica. We have some unique design. So it's probably down an inch below the gravel, which is kind of good because that way nobody can take it. And as I look around, I do see some right at the edges. There's not much left. You can see some over here. The colors are kind of still there, but I think that's just the color of the rock. The, any painting is obviously gone. Right side. through the door here. Looks like a room and it looks like an old private chapel. I don't know if there was a door there, maybe a window. It's really hard to tell, but you definitely want to be careful with the overhangs because one little tremor and you're going to have a bad boo-boo. I would imagine there's quite a bit of decoration. The main altar, what's left of it, this obviously has been looted severely over the centuries. Let's see if this doorway looks any different. This looks, I bet they rebuilt this over the centuries. It looks like it was just put up within the last hundred years. And this resembles, ah, it probably mirrored this on the other side. Hard to tell. There looks like some kind of artwork. I can still see some reds and blues. And I'm thinking I'm seeing an elbow. So that's a person up there, but where's the head? At Perg, I'm, I believe, east of the South Basilica, looking around at this absolutely amazing site. This is just grass and rocks now, but you got to wonder, what did this look like a couple hundred years ago? This had to be really, really amazing. You can see remnants of the area we're going to go to in a little bit, but 
This is just incredible. So this looks like a nice wide open area. There's no weeds or grass, which tells me they're working really hard on it. And I wonder what is that? Is that a platform or something we can go in? Let's go find out. So as we head towards the sizable, what we think might be a fountain, I keep seeing this blue rock. It's appearing all over Turkey. It's on the beaches, it's on the paths, it's everywhere. It's got this weird look to it. That's a bottle cap, folks. Stop throwing your bottle caps on the ground. At least you picked up your bottle, but throw the rest of it away too. As we get closer, you can see these cutouts here. I got a feeling there was some statues in here. There's the entrance over here. And this is dangerous and forbidden to climb on the ruins, so don't climb on the ruins. This could be a foot bath, or maybe it's like some sort of reflection pull. Let's go into this. Last time we were here, we'll see if there's any changes. A lot of pipes that I remember in the middle. We thought this was a bath last time, but at this point, I'm pretty sure this was a fountain. Which means it requires a lot of water. Which means people knew how to move water 1,500 to 2,000 years ago efficiently. And that water came from farther away, which we'll go see from way up on the hilltops over there. There's no snow, which means probably groundwater, natural springs. And then we have this curious emblem. It looks like a knife and a snake. And then it looks like there was some piece here. This looks like maybe a foot. And then a whale, maybe. Look at how straight that line is. I don't think that would have been hard to do back then. But there's some excavation going on down here. Oh, that's odd. They have round columns and square columns. Interesting, and I think this is the main area. And I see something really cool down here. Check this out. Look, we have a unique piece of wildlife here. He's trying to get to some shade. Look at this. Some kind of ground tortoise. Oh, I'm not gonna hurt you, buddy. Hi. Where are you? So we're just walking down the avenue. And I gotta imagine a long time ago, this was marble. There would have been water all throughout this area. I gotta imagine underneath here, there's pipes that help bring the water down from way up off the hill. But this is just really cool stuff. And this would have all been waterways through here. Everywhere would have been water filled up and would have overflowed each of these. The Romans knew how to move water so efficiently that they make today's People look, I don't want to say amateurish, but uh, we have high tech. They didn't, or well, maybe they did. This is just so amazing as we walk around and people walked around here when it was pristine, 1500 to 2000 years ago. There's water over here in this waterway. You can see Hadrian's Gate. 
we can definitely see Hadrian's Gate down here. I would have been standing in a waterway if the water maybe went underneath me here. Temples up there, some kind of waterworks. We're gonna head up there. Some of these old house here. Let's see what we can see. So this might have been possibly a bedroom. Maybe just one little area. These bricks tell me that somebody built after. So maybe this was a big open area and they just kept building and building and going further and further. Columns within. Ooh, I see that could be a well, possibly an old well. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe they were doing some kind of milling here by hand, grinding up the corn, the millet, flour. I see snail shells. Everywhere in Turkey, I see snail shells. Don't forget this has changed quite a bit. This is an odd piece of rock, definitely carved out. Very unique with silverfish running on it. I see old piping here. Wonder if that's original, like 2000 year old woman piping. Pretty cool if it is. They got water to move through here pretty effectively. This is just a maze of houses. Watching out for snakes as I go. Wow, unless you know your way through here, it's definitely a maze. That looks like it goes down, but it's been buried ever since. It is an underground type cave. Let's see what we got here. Whoa, <laughs> watch the rocks. <laughs> that was on camera, right? All right. Oh, I remember this. We have video of this alleyway. I'll show you that one. I'll leave that link in the comment. But we're gonna go out this way. I'm not jumping down a meter. Let's watch that rock again. That's why they say don't climb on the ruins. I'm actually not climbing on the ruins. I'm walking through the ruins. Let's see if I can find Tatiana somewhere in here. Lots and lots of loose rocks, very dangerous. There she is, I found her. Here's a curious thing. So we have three, what looks like areas. That's pretty smooth. I got a feeling somebody milled, maybe they made their breakfast here. I don't wanna move that, it could be a scorpion, but let's find out. No scorpions? No. Snail shell. <laughs> Old snail shells. Let's go for a walk down this alley. I've been down here before in a video two years ago. Let's see if anything's changed. Off the top of my head and my memory, it's still the same, except for that big lizard I just saw to my left. Where is he? Where is he hiding? Steve. What? Uh, look at this. Where? Oh my gosh, what in the heck is that? That is, I am no biologist, but I would say cat print. There's nail prints at the end of these toes. Oh. Hold on a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, how, uh, <laughs> to give you an idea, what in the heck made that print way back when? If you know, or if you can guess, leave it in the comment. That is crazy and absolutely amazing. Oh, this looks like they open this up a little bit more. This was definitely all grass. I got a feeling there's way more. There's houses back here in streets that are still not.
discovered yet. All right, so we came across this oddity somebody put up on the column and it's filled with silver fish, if you can see them. This is like a twisted piece of rock. So again, my archeologists out there, what form this? This thing is actually really dense and heavy. I mean, I'm not kidding. This thing's really heavy. I wonder, did they molten rock and then reform it, twist it? Cause that's what it looks like. This is Fred. Fred's our cameraman. Hi Fred. Pretty cool, the Hover X1. This thing is really coming in handy, especially in environments like this. Just make sure you always ask permission and look for signs first, so you don't get in trouble for flying your drone. But this is the Hover X1 flying camera. columns is pretty cool but the beauty is coming towards us people would have crossed over the bridge over the waterway to our left and right they would have had covered tops here, probably sloping back away to give it a really unique feeling. I mean, just, you know, only a computer rendition or an artist rendition would make this whole again to rebuild this. I, I just, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. The artisans it would take, let alone finding the right quarryable rock. There's a doorway. So maybe there's some kind of private gallery in the water. This looks like a fountain would have come up through here. Remember, water's flowing from the hill, from natural springs down this way, all underneath, carrying down there. And then all the way to that fountain we saw that's a good half mile away now. That's how big this place is. It just... The, the video just probably doesn't even close come to do it justice. And you can hear midday prayer. It's about noon. There's people working up there. When we were here two years ago, that did not look like that at all. So something interesting, you see rocks and you just think, oh, they've been like that forever. And I'm gonna say no. Those look really recent. The reason is there's no dirt in between them. There's no plants. These look like they were set here, probably mostly to stop erosion from all the amazing digging they've done over the years. And there are columns and pieces piled up there. And I guarantee you this field goes on for quite a while. We just can't see it. Here's some ancient writing. Let's see if we can interpret this stuff. I'm not gonna use my water bottles to wet that down to make it better, but let's see if any of you have some technology to see what that says. I'm guessing Latin. But again, you can see by the mix of stones, this is all fairly, fairly recent. <laughs> Somebody who's really just working hard to, to fill this gap in. Here you can see some old stone work. And the cuts on here are pretty good. They're not perfect, but it's probably better than most of us could do with Bronze Age tools. Ah, they had to have something better than that. And correct me if I'm wrong in the Bronze Age. And of course, it was a city. It went out that way. And they would have had walls 
way out that way somewhere. This, I don't believe, was open two years ago. This looks all relatively opened up. And at the very end, that's where the water came out of the mountain. And I know this was not open. Let's go check it out. 